Hello, welcome back to Beautifully Modern APS with RESTful. I'm Matteo and in this occasion I want to talk to you about performance. Um, so one of the things that uh, are going to uh, be a big deal about uh, building all these complex includes that uh, let me remove that uh, all these complex includes that uh, are adding a lot of uh, related entities like you can see here I'm adding uh, for this particular label all the bands all the band members all the friends of the band member and also all of the artists for the label and all of their friends uh, those are lots of uh, lots of people bands and a single label so as you can see in the output there's uh, this some uh, serious amount of output and you can uh, you can imagine how this is going to take quite some time to return so uh, what I'm going to show you is how you can uh, leverage all the caching layers that are available to you so uh, let me start with doing the draw CCO and uh, what that will do as you know is it will clear all of the caches that are uh, on, on your system so the first thing that I want you to to set up is PMI and TT cache. In this case, uh, this is oops. In this case, uh, entity cache is not going to uh, make a huge difference between because uh, our entities are just playground entities and are, they are not very complex so and don't have a lot of uh, content in there actually so uh, given that the data model is very simple this is not going to make a difference but in a real side you definitely want to install memcache uh, sorry entity cache uh, I'm getting ahead of myself um, so just enable it and that should be it it should start getting your entities cached. Uh, that's awesome. So the next thing that you want to do is enabling memcache. As you can see, I'm going to show you how I got it enabled. So that will uh, add a cache backend of uh, memcache and uh, will allow you to put things in memory instead of the default which is putting them into the, the database so uh, this needs a little bit more configuration to get installed so don't hesitate and get over to memcache to the memcache project page and you will see that it's telling you to to read the readme.txt that contains some installation instructions. So I uh, head over this and I uh, put this, this and this in my, my config file. And then I also like the lock, the locking mechanism, uh, which is kind of good. So uh, yeah, basically that's, that's all I do. Um, so I'm going to show you my settings.php and here at the end you can see how I have the cache backend pointing to memcache and the default class pointing to memcache Drupal. So uh, yeah, that, that should be, that should be it. Uh, this is going to put all of your caches inside of memcache and uh, it should be good to go. All right, um, next step is going to be uh, caching your requests. So uh, for that, I'm going to log in and I'm going to go to, to the RESTful module settings page and see here, uh, I have cache enabled because I was doing some tests and I'm gonna disable this and I'm also going to disable caching for for page for pages. So I'm gonna disable page cache. 
So let me reload and show you here that uh, my caches are not enabled. So if I were to do a request, I'm going to find some cold caches and uh, I'm going to make it a couple of times to just to make sure that I'm getting the, a pretty consistent result on 400 and something, 15, 417, 10, 50, etc. So that's uh, more or less what, what it takes for this request to build this, to build this output. So um, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, one of the things that you want to see here, are going to see here, is that, uh, that the default cache header, and these are the headers of the response, uh, are going to show that you are uh, having a cache miss. So that means that page cache is not being enabled. Okay, so I'm gonna start enabling the RESTful caches uh, one by one. So first I'm going to uh, enable render cache, which is uh, which is this one. You can read the um, description here, uh, but uh, basically what it's going to do, it's going to take every one of these entities. So it's going to start with, sorry, with the label. And it's going to uh, generate this output and cache it and then it's going to cache the band and then here is gonna cache this person etc etc so it's gonna cache everything separately but then it's going to nest everything together because uh, we are getting the output for a label that contains bands and those bands contain members and those members contain friends and also the the labels contain artists and those artists contain friends so this is you can imagine this as a tree structure so basically uh, everything derives from uh, label 58 so uh, not only we're gonna get caches for every single entity here but also you're gonna get uh, a big cache for label 58 with all of the bands and artists etc etc so uh, let's uh, save this I don't know if I saved already okay uh, this is saved and uh, for this demonstration I'm going to uh, just show you I'm gonna, going to add this piece of code and here let me show you what this does uh, this is basically going to add uh, a cache uh, sorry uh, header which is going to have this this uh, header name and we're going to put the the resource ID and um, sorry the the resource name so this would be like label 1.0 uh, or people 1.0 whatever and this is the ID so it's going to be 58 94 etc so we will know uh, whenever we get cached data so we will see how this is how this is building. So first of all, when I do my first uh, request, um, I'm going to oops, I'm going to uh, I'm going to see that there are no caches. So I'm going to start generating uh, the entities. So the ones that are going to be generated are the outermost entities, which are going to be the friends. So what's going to happen is that uh, I'm going to generate, for instance, 989 and then 55, etc. But when, whenever I get um, a reuse of this entity, because this entity, for instance, uh, let me find this 53. If I find 53, you will see that uh, I have it in people friendship I have one reference uh, I have another reference here in the in the label artist I have another reference in the band member etc etc so you are going to see how I'm going to create it the first time uh, 
uh, let me scroll to here. I'm going to create it here, but then I'm going to reuse it for this tree-like structure for for the different uh, stages of the of the entities. So uh, what I'm going to see is that uh, in the output in the headers, I'm going to probably see that person populated. And that's the only thing that uh, the cache system is going to be able to uh, reuse because the other ones are going to get generated but not used. They're going to be used in next requests. So um, let's go ahead and send the request and you can see that, uh, I don't know what's going on here with this app. Let me just, no, that didn't help. Okay, uh, well, this is people 1.056, and then you can see here the 53. So uh, just on the, on the first request, on the one that is supposed to be called, remember that uh, we cleared caches right here. Um, we are starting to leverage uh, the, the cache already, but uh, that is a little bit more work than, than the initial uh, request without caches. But as soon as we get a second request, we're going to leverage all of the other caches that we build. And in this case, we just, uh, since we are requesting label 58, we're going to get just uh, one hit and that's going to be enough because remember we are caching the whole tree like structure and that means that by doing this single request every every field is here all the people all the bands these two people this is the band and the label everything everything's here and look we went for from 400 milliseconds to 83 milliseconds so that's pretty cool and we keep uh, if we keep doing this you can see that uh, it gets pretty stable at 70 80 something so uh, of course clicking here and resending the request is not a proper way to do a performance audit but uh, you get the the idea so uh, whenever you are caching these tree like structures uh, your next question should be okay uh, what if uh, I'm caching these labels and all of the bands in it so what if I change something in the band like uh, change the bio would requesting a label have the outdated or the old bio because it's cached and since we didn't touch the label right we are not invalidating easily the um, uh, the label cache because we are actually uh, updating the band so let's go ahead and uh, do the edit for the band this is node 57 edit and I'm going to um, to add some new text here. I'm going to save. So as we saw before, before I hit send again, uh, we only got the information for this. So if we were to get from memcache the information for this label, we would get the band in it. So um, how, uh, what we want to achieve is a way of saying, okay, uh, we have, this is the cache record for the label, uh, but we, inside of the label, we have other entities cached as well. So whenever you change the label or any entities that are contained into this label, you need to invalidate the cache for this label. And uh, that's uh, basically what uh, we should be doing. So remember, we edited the, the band to add this new text. So basically uh, what that means is that we should have invalidated this cache, but not the ones that uh, we, had, we have below 
the, the label. So, sorry, below the band. So all the members and their friends should be still cached and we should be able to leverage them. The only caches that we would not be able to, to leverage is ban, the band and the label. So if we hit send, uh, we go back and as you can see, there are lots of people that we are leveraging their caches but uh, you don't see any bands or labels and that is um, that is pretty useful because that means that you are not stuck with uh, TTL based caches so you can go crazy or not that crazy actually uh, you can just put a TTL that that keeps the uh, the cache forever and by TTL I mean uh, an automatic expiration timer uh, instead of setting it to 15 minutes or whatever you say hey I'm gonna cache it I'm gonna cache this forever because I know that whenever a change is made uh, uh, the, um, this system that uh, keeps track of the caching is gonna bubble up and even if I make a change on the band it's gonna invalidate the label because it knows that the label is affected by the, the band and uh, finally if we go back and see the body of this um, we got uh, we shortcut some work by using these all these caches the caches for all these people and if we head back to the body we can see that the output contains the label itself and it includes it contains the bio with the new item so you don't get a stale caches and you can cache them uh, for a long long time so uh, you can have a very dynamic changes uh, and uh, everything is cached and is it stays up to date so if I were of course to redo this request I would see that I'm just using this one because uh, it makes sense and if I just uh, do the request for all of the labels including all of the bands for all of the labels etc etc if I do that I'll see that I'm using this to build label 58 but for other labels that I never built before I'm reusing all of this information that is already computed when we selected this. So uh, this builds the, um, the cache entries intelligently and uh, at the end oops, you can see that uh, we are just requesting levels, uh, labels because we got a cache because we, uh, we got it before and see how uh, simple is this, uh, sorry, how quick is this request, how fast and again all of the labels are here and all of the includes are here with all of the data of course you could do sparse field sets on this etc etc so uh, yeah that's how you can uh, leverage this uh, there's gonna be another video explaining the details on how this uh, is supported and, and implemented in case you can you want to leverage that in your custom your custom resources but uh, before we we move to other stuff uh, I want to show you how this stays uh, around 150 yeah more or less but if we <coughs> sorry about that if we were to disable caching here so we are not using the render cache we're using the other caches we're using uh, entity cache and we're putting the entity caches in in main cache um, so since i disabled caching i will not see this because obviously um, i will not get into this because cache is not enabled you can see that instead of 150 we we get almost two seconds because we are loading a lot of uh, a lot of stuff so uh, that's a pretty big performance improvement so let me put that back oh. 
Yeah. It, it goes back to, to 143. Um, finally, I want to show you how you can use page cache. So uh, by using page cache, you're going to have the biggest uh, improve, performance improve of, of all. And uh, these cache results work for authenticated users. So uh, there is nothing that stops you from uh, having caches for um, different users that can see different fields. So uh, if there is a difference between user two and user seven uh, on the fields that they can see, uh, those caches will be built separately and user 7 will see some caches and user 2 will, will see other caches so they will both get the performance boost but they will still see what they have access to see so uh, make sure that uh, you enable caching for your uh, for, for your resources and use them uh, for every situation so if your API, and this is going to be a common use case, is only for anonymous traffic, you are going to benefit greatly from enabling page cache. So I'm going to go ahead and going to uh, cache pages, enable cache page cache, otherwise I'm gonna, not going to be able to, to tick that box in here. I'm going to go over here and now I'm going to select page cache. So basically what you will see is that this is going to go from miss to hit uh, after we do the first request. So we're going to do the first request, we're going to miss the cache, but it's going to be built, the page cache. In this case, this is not a layer of cache. This comes uh, with Drupal itself. So uh, first I'm going to get a miss and second time for this particular URL, I'm going to get a hit and uh, see how much we go down. So we go down from about two seconds to 20 milliseconds. So uh, in order to get a very performant API, uh, the only thing that you need to do is make sure that you enable page cache and uh, configure it properly. I like uh, memcache. I also like to, to enable the consistent cache lookup module. But, um, but yeah, uh, I mean, just uh, use whatever you would use to, to do page caching and then go ahead and click here to enable the RESTful implementation or the RESTful support for page cache. And, uh, yeah, and you're, you're a super performant API with lots of content on it in a single request. So uh, basically, instead of having to make a very slow requests and having to make 20 of them, you do a single one that is very, very fast. See, very fast. That's it. See you in the next video.